Hello, my name's Louise Mergen and I'm the Manager of Library Operations for the City of Port Lincoln. So what we do is we digitise our collections for preservation, but mainly for access. Our resources are then digitised and so we hold on to a digital copy and then we offer those for access via our website and through Trove and through the Public Library Network. So ultimately what we are aiming to achieve with our digitisation program is to make items accessible for people. What we want to do is talk a bit about um, who we've got in our community and about our social history. What makes us a little bit different, I suppose, from everyone else. So we have found with our digitised collections, that has enabled further access and in fact expanded the opportunity for people to access our library service. So for example, when it comes to family history inquiries, local history inquiries, quite often people can find it for themselves on our catalogue or on the website. We have worked collaboratively um, with other agencies and museums in our region. What happens is we receive an inquiry quite often. Our um, Railway Museum, Axel Stenros, Family History Group are able to assist us with that. So the Neville Wanklin collection is a great example of that. So Neville was a maritime aficionado. He was a local journalist and a photographer. And he has captured um, a broad range of photographs, particularly um, with an interest in boats and ships. Um, and we'll be able to go ahead and digitise a lot of that collection and make that accessible for everyone. It also complements the work that the Axel Stenros Museum are doing. So we work closely uh, with our local agencies and we appreciate all of the support that they provide us too. So we have the Port Lincoln Times on microfilm from 1927 to 65 there. On the National Library database on Trove, the Port Lincoln Times has been digitised from the first edition, 1927, up until 1953. So there's a bit of a, a gap there in those years. So fortunately, through the History Trust, we were able to uh, track some funding and we had some uh, Port Lincoln Times digitised. So they're from the years 66 to 69 inclusive. So we have them now here on digital file, which is fabulous for people that are doing research and looking up those years, it was a, it was a gap in the collection and we were just, uh, there was always an interest that people were wondering why couldn't they look up these years? I don't know, it just seemed to be Port Lincoln's heyday, I think. <laughs>